Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Easter celebration service as we gather in hope and joy to celebrate that Christ is risen. My name is Lynn. I have the privilege of being the minister at Adelaide West and sharing with you today on this Easter Sunday. Welcome to each of you, wherever you are. Some of you are regularly part of online services, others are away on the weekend, and then also those needing to isolate at home. Some of you, due to contracting COVID, a special welcome to you. You are in our prayers. Today, we gather with the Worldwide Church. And we think of that as we light a candle, and I encourage you to do the same. Remember that Christ is risen alive and present with us. For the kids today, there are some activity sheets on the Facebook page and group that you can download. And can I encourage anyone who see themselves as a Lego master to build an Easter scene, perhaps something from the Bible reading. And if you do, we would love to see a photo of it. In this service, we'll have some worship, including several worship songs by the Ferguson family. And one of our favorites, uh, the guest appearance of Frankie, their dog who just wanted to join in. We'll listen to the scriptures, pray together, and there'll be something to reflect about for Easter. And after the message, we'll be sharing communion. So you might like to have bread, crackers, and some juice on hand for that. We worship our God. Yours be the glory risen conquering son endless is the victory you over death have won thine be the glory
The reading today is John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen laying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is no longer dead. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing that you can be born again. Hear the bells ringing, they're singing Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus Christ is no longer dead.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Words that we say on Easter Sunday. We say it because we believe the story of Easter. The resurrection gives us hope. The resurrection brings or turns death to life, darkness to light, struggle to peace. We believe the story. We know there are many that don't believe, although it's surprising how many do. The National uh, Church Life Survey that we've recently taken part in also does surveys and research in the community, and they found that 44% of the community believes in the resurrection. 44%! That's way more than I would have expected. They also found that 30% of the community would come to church if invited also way higher than we might expect. We come to this Easter Sunday, just a couple of days from Good Friday, where we journeyed to the cross, where we reflected on the darkness, where we entered the sacred story. And that is where Mary and the two disciples are. You know, we know the ending, but they don't as yet. They find the tomb empty, but they don't yet understand about the resurrection. Mary Magdalene goes alone to the tomb. She finds it empty and goes running to Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Mary shares what she's found with them in some distress. And they need to see it for themselves. I would do the same. So Peter and the disciple race to the tomb. I love this painting of this by Eugene Bernand the worry, the the unknown. What are we going to encounter? What's going on? You know, the other disciple gets there first, but then gets cold feet and waits outside. Peter goes in, as we would expect, and he finds the linen wrappings that were around the body of Jesus. The other disciple decides to also go in, and the text tells us he saw and believed. Now, at this point, they believed the body wasn't in the tomb. They still didn't know about the resurrection. We know the end of the story, but they don't. Where was Jesus? The disciples didn't know what to do, so they went back home. It was confusing, to say the least. But Mary didn't want to go home. She stayed at the tomb. She wanted to work out what was going on. Can we feel her anguish? First, Jesus was killed on a cross, the most cruel death that the Romans could inflict. And now his body was gone. Could things get any worse? She couldn't help it. She was crying. She was crushed, full of despair and anguish. This is the man that had brought her hope. And now this. She saw a man but doesn't recognise who he is. Maybe she couldn't see through all the tears. Maybe there is something completely different about him. She thinks she's talking to the gardener. The man asks her why she is crying. Through tears, she tells of her confusion and grief. And then, then the moment happens. The moment of recognition. The moment everything changes. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Mary responds to hearing her name. Jesus says one word and she realized who it was and she cries out in Aramaic. Joy replaces tears. Hope replaces anxiety. Jesus has risen. You can almost hear The world draw breath. The world changes forever. The world breathes out resurrection joy. You know, in the first 11 verses, tomb is mentioned nine times. And then from verse 12 onwards, it is not. The empty tomb is replaced with the risen Jesus. The world changes forever. The disciples missed out on this moment. The men had gone home in confusion, wondering, but Mary was here for that moment. John and the other gospel writers placed the first news of the resurrection in the hands of women. And here in John's case, to Mary Magdalene alone. It's another surprise. 
of the resurrection, that the first to carry the gospel were women in a culture where women had no standing and no authority. Jesus changes the culture, changes the story, turns things upside down, changes the world forever. You know, sometimes we get all caught up in, in the how in this story. Does the how really matter? Are we not able to experience the risen Christ present in our lives and our world, knowing that the resurrection happened? We just don't know how. You know, each of us will recognize Jesus in different ways. Resurrection will dawn on us in different ways. Mary and the two disciples don't interpret the resurrection. Jesus does that. They find the empty tomb. They don't have the experience of the resurrection until Jesus comes to them and says, Here am I. You know, it's almost a cliche now. We live in a time of such uncertainty. We don't know what the future looks like. Sometimes we stand weeping outside the tomb of life. Sometimes the world is weeping. We mourn the loss of many things. We are confused, bewildered and disoriented in all the uncertainty. And, and just on a day-to-day -day level, at any moment, we can receive a text and suddenly, in a moment, we are isolating for seven days as a close contact. Or we go for a PCR test and receive that text. Or we see two lines on a little plastic disc. And suddenly, life changes significantly for a week. We plan social events and parties and they're cancelled. Schools open and close. Masks are on and off. Our trips interstate or overseas are also on or off. In this uncertainty, Easter arrives. The resurrection comes. Jesus calls our names. Darkness turns to light. Despair turns to hope. Uncertainty turns to joy. For God so loved the world that he gave his son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The tomb can represent so many things in our lives that are the struggles, the doubts, the confusion. Don't race past the tomb. We know that place ourselves. And we are to stand with those who struggle in life, struggle with the story of Easter, who have no hope. Sometimes that's us. Sometimes it's others. The Spirit accompanies us in our seeing, believing and not understanding and in our ability or inability to see Jesus, even when he's right in front of us. We share the journey together. On Friday, I said that the Good Friday service doesn't really finish as it continues to Easter Sunday. Sunday was coming. Well, Sunday has come and much has changed. How different it is. John tells us that Jesus reveals God to the world and through Jesus, the way is now open to have a relationship with God through Christ, who is resurrected. There's this beautiful saying, the evidence for Jesus' resurrection is so strong that nobody would question it except for two things. First, it is a very unusual event. And second, if you believe it happened, you have to change the way you live. Christ is risen, risen indeed. The risen Christ calls us by name. Mary's experience in the garden is the reminder that there is a resurrection awaiting us each day of our lives and when the days of our lives are over. Don't go home confused. Stay and find Jesus. Jesus, who is all about life. Easter Sunday is resurrection joy. Hope for us today. Hope for us for tomorrow. Hope for us when we live and when we die. Where hope replaces anxiety and despair. Where light replaces darkness. 
live in this hope. Live in this light. Live in Jesus, who is all about life. Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus is our Redeemer, God's own Son. Amen. Friends, communion is the very embodiment of this day. Good Friday and today are lived out for us in this special meal. Good Friday is past. We celebrate on this side of the cross and we speak of life from death. Come now to the feast of life that takes all our past and redeems it with life. Come to the table for the host is waiting with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Today we remember the story of Easter. How on the night when Jesus was arrested, he gathered with his friends, sitting at a meal table. Plates and cups, conversations and jokes, friendship and betrayal. Christ saying, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Take and drink, this is a new covenant in my blood. So we do this to remember Jesus giving his life for us. We do this proclaiming our Lord's death until he comes again. We set apart the bread and this juice wherever we are, simple symbols, ordinary food that we've gathered from our kitchens that connect us to the story of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. 
Let's pray. Loving God, we gather to give thanks to you. You are good and your love endures forever. We give you all thanks and praise, glory and honour today in this place. We give you thanks for giving us your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Born as one of us, he lived our common life and offered his life to you in perfect obedience and trust. Lord Jesus, companion and saviour, bread breaker, life giver, grave dancer, wine sharer, stone roller, gardener, returned. Hear our thanksgiving, gathering with all those who have ever gathered around this table, meeting your promise in this story that pulls death from the world and redeems it with life. Hear our confession. We are sorry for those things in our lives that are not of you, the things that we say and do and, and even think. Thank you that these things, our sins, are forgiven. You have delivered us from sin. You bring us new life and you reconcile us with you and with one another. Holy God, we also thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this juice. And we pray that we who eat and drink them in obedience to Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit may be made one with Christ and with each other in peace and love. On this day, when we celebrate that Christ is risen today, when we remember Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We offer you all honour and glory. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together in your preferred version or in your preferred language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I encourage you to take the bread and to tear it apart. You know, the bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, a reminder that we are a broken people. And when we share the broken bread, we are remembered, put back together by God. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. For the ancient people, blood was the symbol of life. So this reminds us of the life of Christ. So here at this table of bread and cup, graced by the spirit of hope and peace, we discover the wonderful love that Jesus has for us. So as we feast on this bread, we embody Easter. We remember the sacrifice of Jesus and new life in the resurrection. As we drink from the cup, may we be transformed by its peace that we might go out to bring God's peace to our world, even in these continuing anxious times, and to tell others the good news. Friends, as we celebrate Christ is risen, we rejoice that these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. I invite you to take the bread and to remember Jesus' body broken and his compassion for us. And we take the cup. And as we do that, we remember the life that Jesus lived and the life that we are called to live.
Together, may we be a sign of hope and faith, united in community. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to remember new life today. And our prayers for others. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for those who do not share our Easter joy, for those who live in the shadow of darkness and despair, for those who aren't able to share in the communion that we've just shared together, for those who live with the darkness of war and we think of the Ukraine, for those who live with uncertainty and hopelessness and we think of people in Myanmar Afghanistan, Sierra Leone, for those with shattered dreams, trust betrayed and love denied, for those who live without faith or hope or love, who see no resurrection, no hope of opportunities for themselves or for the world. We pray for our world and world leaders, our nation and our nation's leaders, our communities schools and workplaces, for our churches and for our families, friends and work colleagues. We pray for those on our hearts today. We pray together in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. We have celebrated together, Christ is risen. We hope it has brought you joy. If you would like prayer, send us an email so that we can pray for you and with you. Or if you're watching live, press the prayer button. Kids, we'd be interested in what you've created in Lego, coloured or drawn, and send a photo to kids at awc.org.au or post it on the Facebook page. We would love to see it. Next week, we gather again at 10 a.m. online or in person at Adelaide West at 9.15 for the traditional service or 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. for all age services. Today, we've rejoiced. Christ is risen. The risen Christ calls us by name. Remember that he awaits us each day of our lives. Stay and find Jesus. Jesus who is all about life. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love and the presence of God and the fellowship, friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ is risen.
He is risen indeed.